Welcome back. So we're going to kick off a conversation uh, with Dr. Murat about debt and equity crowdfunding. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Samson Williams. I'm principal consultant at Axes and Eggs, a think tank and digital advisor based in Washington, D.C. Um, and this is Dr. Murat from Crowdy Advisors. And so we're going to talk about debt and equity crowdfunding, get a little bit into the details. So, um, Dr. Murat, how is this right? How is this legal? How do people actually do this? So regulation crowdfunding is part of is part of Title Three of the Jobs Act, Jumpstart Our Businesses and Startups Act, which was enacted in 2012. Um, the actual Reg CF though didn't become enacted until May of 2016. So it actually just celebrated its third year anniversary. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, so it allows you to raise money now from people who are not considered accredited investors, so high net worth people and, and, and people who have wealth. Um, now, retail investors is what we call them. So everyday average people can now invest in small businesses and startups. Mm -hmm. So um, is there a technical definition of accredited investor or is that just something I give myself? No. So there is a technical a definition of an accredited investor. And that is that someone who has made $200,000 in the last two years, $200,000 per year in the last two years, or has a million dollars in assets that doesn't include their home. And then it's $300,000 if, if the person is married. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so everyone else is a quote unquote retail investor? Right. Pretty much. Yeah. So if you fall outside of the accredited investor definition, then you're considered a non-accredited investor. Okay. So I'm going to call them sharks and baby sharks. Okay. Uh, and so mm -hmm. when we're talking about these baby sharks and they want to do these investment, uh, they want to invest in an equity crowdfunding deal. Uh, let our audience know what does that look like from their perspective as a baby shark, someone who's just getting into investing. So the rules require that the issuer, so the company who is accepting the payments, mm -hmm. has to accept the payments on a funding platform or funding portal. And that funding portal has to be registered with the SEC as well as um, be licensed to operate via FINRA, the Financial Regulatory Authority. Mm -hmm. And so as a, an investor, a retail investor, you go onto the platform and you look at the different projects that are available and you look to see if there are any that you're interested in and you give whatever the minimum is or whatever number you decide. But as an investor, because you're a non-accredited investor, you, there are limitations, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't just give any amount that you want. Um, there is- I can't give $100,000 or, or a million or the full million? No, so the number right now is 5% or I think it's about $2,500 per year that one person can give. Okay. So, um, so choose wisely, right? Uh, I'll just say that, choose wisely. <laughs> Cause we don't wanna give investor advice, but um, just know that there are limitations. That's what I'm saying. Okay, cool. So as a retail investor, I go to one of these FINRA approved funding portals. Um, some of them are Start Engine, uh, we fund their, there's, there's about 30 of them if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yes. And so you should always check FINRA.gov to see if that funding portal, that website, is actually FINRA approved. Yes. Um, that way because there are some who have lost their approval. Yes. That way you're making sure you're dealing with a regulated entity. And so I go on, I put in my $300, I put in my $500. What do I get? In exchange, if you're doing equity crowdfunding, then you get equity or some ownership interest that is proportional to whatever you put in. Um, it just really depends on what the issuer, the company is willing to give up in terms of equity for the amount that they're seeking to raise. So it's a very small portion um, and you don't necessarily have all the rights and, and responsibilities of the traditional shareholder, if you will. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes the um, ownership interest is very limited. So you don't have voting rights or anything like that. Do I need voting rights? You don't need voting rights to be um, to have equity in a company. No, that's not required. Um, and oftentimes, because there are so many people who are who have invested in this one particular mm -hmm. project, it's actually not advisable to have all those people have voting rights. Okay. So for the folks out there who are considering this, get on one of these FINRA-approved regulating uh, FINRA-approved platforms. They make an investment. 
How do they make money? How, the portals? No, how does the investor make money? So the investor, um, one, the SEC warns investors um, that they should not invest money that they can't afford to lose because in any investment, whether it's in business or stocks or anything like that, there is the risk that you could lose all your money. Mm -hmm. So that's one. And so the way that the investor could make money on the back end is by either the company being acquired and so they have to pay out of all the original shareholders or maybe at some point the company makes so much money that they can pay off some of the shareholders or after what's called the lockup period, which in this case is 12 months, you can transfer it. Mm -hmm. So you can sell it or exchange it to another person. Mm. It, you mentioned the lockup period. Is it always 12 months? Yes, there are exceptions, but in, initially um, the default is there's 12 months before you can transfer and do anything with that equity, but there are exceptions. So it sounds like this uh, this equity crowdfunding thing sounds a lot like going on to E-Trade and buying a share, but I just have to wait 12 months before I can sell it. It's very similar, um, but um, in this instance, you are, because these companies are not public, so when you go on E-Trade, you are investing in public companies, so they are under more restrictive rules than, let's say, a Reg CF raise. And so, so that would be the, the differentiation. But yes, essentially it's about the same. You go onto a platform, you determine how much you can spend, whether that's mm -hmm. something that you won't miss, and then you, you, you buy whatever um, shares you want to buy. Okay, excellent. Or stocks. So that's a little bit of insight into how equity crowdfunding works. If you have additional questions, we have some additional uh, videos and presentations that we're going to go over. Uh, we're going to move. We're going to switch the gears in our next video to talk a little bit about initial coin offerings, securitized token offerings, and crowdfunding to really get a sense of, excuse me, what are those and what all the hype is about. So stay tuned. Join us for our next video. All right. See ya.